And, and in, in your case, I mean, there, there was a, a, a big moment for you in 2018. Well, I, I, you can tell us which, which is the second one, yeah, about taking the, the state to court, as it were, on the question of providing information on this, this huge Sanders deal and the court uh, saying that, in fact, you had a right, and, and, and you, you operating as a person in representing the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. The information should have been made public. Yes. Well, Andy, I wanted to say to you that that, that point that you highlighted is very important, but it was the second victory right. in, that, in that trend. The, the Sandals MOU, the, the Memorandum of Understanding that the government signed on our behalf for the Tobago Sandals as intended to be constructed at, at a Golden Grove, Boku, no man's land is uh, was signed on the 10th of October last year and of course it's non-binding and it sets out the intentions of the parties and it's a very unique moment because while at the same time we're trying to look back over a 12-month period it's yeah. the function of the show and our exchanges it's also important to locate it in a larger context it's unique because we have a large-scale development that is being planned within let us be frank the usual conditions of secrecy and I have been able, by a very focused effort, to get the publication of the MOU before any concrete has been poured. Yeah. According to Dr. Rowley in Parliament on Wednesday, the 12th of December, which is last week, Wednesday, a week ago, nothing has been signed. We're a long way away from anything being signed. According to the statement from the Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, Mr. Kelvin Charles, that he released yesterday, obviously in response to our meeting in Scarborough on Thursday, nothing has been signed. So then I want to say to them, and I'm taking the opportunity on your show, Andy, gentlemen, that is marvelous news. If nothing has been signed, well, then we could be discussing everything again. Because certainly there are parts of that agreement that are deeply detrimental to this country. And then that discussion needs to be reopened now, if not sooner. So w what was the issue about that if nothing was signed? And if, it, it, you know, the, the government was... was what, what they were saying, the MOU was signed on the 10th yeah. of October last year. What the government has been saying, and, and Mr. Mr. Chief Secretary, Mr. Kelvin Charles and Dr. Rowley has been saying, is that no further agreements have been signed, no further binding agreements have been signed, and that matters are still in discussion. And the position I am taking is that if matters are still in discussion, given how de detrimental the closes of the MOU are, there is time and space for us to address those detriments and also the actual question of whether the project should take place at all. At all. You see, those, those, are, those are fundamental questions that are now up for discussion, given that nothing has been signed. And nothing we're, binding. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the, with Mr. Young in particular, mm -hmm. who was leading the charge sort of um, mm -hmm. in, 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 in opposition to, to your yes. activism on yes. the matter, yes. they were putting up uh, resistance on the basis that, well, this is a sensitive thing mm -hmm. and we can't release the information. Yes, yes, yes. And was it was it a fact that um, was, to what extent that was substantial? When Mr. Adam Stewart was it said to reporters in Antigua or somewhere yes. that well, we have no we have no issue with wanting to keep anything secret. Well, I think and Andy, Andy, that's a very pertinent point you're raising. I think they were blowing hot and cold on it. Was it a secret? Was it not really a secret? They were, both sides, the government and the Sanders, were blowing hot and cold on it. The point is that when you look at the clauses in the MOU, and I'll go into that in a little while. When you look at the clauses in the MOU. You can understand why there was this tremendous ambivalence about it. Because what it is, as, as far as I could see, is that the country has actually, uh, I don't want to say committed itself, the country has, has, has noted its intention to spend our money to build this large scale resort. I think the, the permission they applied for is for 925 rooms. Yeah. The MOU mentions about 820 rooms. The country has applied for permission. The country has applied for permission to build 925 rooms at our expense. So, so Mr. Butch is Stewart, that an issue in itself? That, of course um, it is. That, Mr. That Butch and Sanders are not spending any 20. money. Yeah. No, not plus. It's, 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 it's one of the two. Yeah, right. yeah? But Mr. Butch Stewart and Sanders aren't spending any money. Even the money that they're spending in design fees, because they're designing the resort to their specifications, even that money, if this project doesn't proceed for any reason, the government is supposed to refund that money to them. So even that, even those relatively minor expenses are not being placed at risk by Sanders. The only money being placed at risk is our money. And there's nothing wrong if you look at the history of point leases or indeed the big investments in our country, the big game-changing investments in the country. There's nothing wrong with the state taking a role as a risk taker in transforming the economy. Where you go further is that in fact having 
agreed to spend the money to put up the resort. We appear to be granting, we appear to have agreed to grant tax concessions, duty concessions, and work permit concessions to Sandals. So one has to ask the question, if you have a tax concession, and you have a duty concession, and you have a work permit concession, so there's no guarantee of employment, and you have concessions in respect of procurement, the acquisition of goods and services, that they can decide who they want to give those contracts to, What's in it for Trinidad and Tobago? Why should we spend $3 billion in a situation where the intention set out in the MOU don't have any clarity as to how we're going to get a return on that money? So it's, yeah. it's, it's a terrible agreement. I'm delighted that both of those senior officials have confirmed that the thing has not been agreed, that no further contracts have been signed, and that matters are up for discussion. But great, let's discuss it. What, what does it say, though, overall, that at th three years into, because we came into this administration with yes. that, at, yes. at the top of somebody who is very agenda, that, that, that nothing is signed three years later. And not well, nothing substantive has, signed, has well, been signed. Well, it remains to be seen um, what is and isn't signed. I think that my experience in these things tells me that these things take a long time. They weren't able to do anything in terms of actually operationalize the conversation um, Dr. Rowley had with Mr. Butch Stewart. They weren't able to operationalize that till they won the election in September of 2015. And they started to operationalize it with certain things, they put up certain groups and working parties and so on. And these things will take a long time in conversation. I'd be I'd be surprised, Andy, if in fact the only thing that's signed is the MOU. And I think I think they, they I think they may have advanced along the road. Um, obviously people like Rowley, um, Dr. Rowley, the Prime Minister, or Mr. Kelvin Charles, who's the head of the THA, may not actually be the persons signing those agreements because if they are binding contracts, permanent secretaries and so will sign them, or state enterprises will sign them. But certainly, I, I'd be surprised if we're not further along the road. But, um, so, so what, are we, we suggesting that um, we're not being told the whole truth then, if, 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 if people are saying that nothing Well, we have, we, have had, we have had a hot and cold breeze blowing all the way through this. And as I'm saying, as I'm saying, if it is indeed that nothing has been signed that's binding the country, that's very, very good news because we can reopen this thing for discussion. Another aspect of the thing that concerns me, Andy, and it's, 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 it ought to concern every citizen, is that throughout this, this matter, the names of very eminent citizens have been invoked as having been involved. So, for example, on the 30th of June of 2016, the, the cabinet announced the appointment of a working and negotiating team that was chaired by former finance minister Wendell Mahoney. Dr. Terence Farrell was on that committee. Um, uh, Dr. Ralph Balgobin was on that committee. On this matter? Yep. So uh, the cabinet appointed a negotiating team. I'm just remembering three prominent names of eminent people. A little while passed, as we know, Dr. Dr. Um, Dr. Farrell resigned from the Economic Development Board. We also know Mr. Motley stood down from his public appointments at the end of May this year. But in a little while, about 18 months ago, we started hearing about a cabinet-appointed negotiating team with my friend, former, another former finance minister, Conrad Enel, Mr. Wilfred Espine, who is now the chairman of Petrofin, and other people. So, the, so the, the, the composition of the team has changed? Yes. But the point I'm making uh, is that what has been invoked along the way, officially, has been the names of very eminent people as having been involved in these negotiations. We also have the Tobago Tourism Agency, which has which replaced the TDC, and that is chaired by Dr. Shilma Roberts, who's an eminent person at the UB Cave Hill, dealing with tourism, the master's program in tourism. And I'm asking the question, did all these eminent people sign off on this deal? It's a terrible deal. Are, they, are, are those conditions, terms and conditions, terms and conditions that they approved? Because it's something the country needs to know. Is it, is, it, is it really that we agreed to spend $3 billion in a context where we have transfer pricing arrangements in place to minimize the tax standards payments? We have a management contract in place where they can put subsidiary companies along the way to take to suck money out as they see fit, which is the purpose of transfer pricing. We have no guarantees of employment. We have no guarantees of local supplies. And, and that is, the, that, is that the best we could have done? The, the, at this point, mm -hmm. there is no guarantee that this deal will go through? No, there's not, no guarantee, no. At this point, what is your feeling about, so this, this administration has two years to go before the next general election. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, what do you think, what do you see over the next two years as to how in, this matter will this be project, progressed? I am not, I'm not a, I'm not a sight there, but I would expect that there would be efforts to push the project. A lot of political capital has been sunk into it um, from the level of Dr. Rowley come down 
people have people have stood behind it and spoken loudly in support of it. And the kind of way that we play our, we play our political sports in this space, it's kind of rare that somebody having committed this amount of political capital to bet on this horse would actually back down and say, well, and I think Dr. Rowley, there's a statement I remember from him saying that in fact only the courts would stop the project. So he, he appeared to be, from that from the tone of that statement, to be quite committed to the advancement of the project. We would see, you know, I guess we would see as, as, as it done.